All right, guys, in today's video, it's just going to be a quick maintenance video. We got some belts that are shot on these Craftsman garage door openers. This is a half horse. There's another one that's a three quarter. And I thought it'd be worthwhile to show you how you pick the correct size because these belts do come in different sizes. So stay tuned and we'll go through that. All right, guys, the two openers we're working on today is this Craftsman 139.53915D and the 139.53918D. So the only difference is in their horsepower. They both take the same belt. If you don't have the owner's manual, then they'll be good what I'm gonna show you in here as well. If you were to just open up the owner's manual and, and go to the section on parts, you might think, well, this is, this is simple. I'll just go to the parts section and I'll see what belt I need. And it'll come over here and you'll see on the rail assembly parts, Coiled up belts, part six, and it tells you the belt assembly is part number 41A5250. Now, this is a good number for the base unit. If you go to like Sears Parts Direct or something like that, they'll tell you it's discontinued. But you got to remember these Craftsman openers were made by the same company that currently makes Liftmaster and Chamberlain. So you can still get this part there. But this is not the only part number you could run into. There's also two other belts that could come on this, and it depends on whether the person that installed your unit purchased one of these accessories. If the person installed this accessory 139-53728, which is an eight foot rail extension, then it comes with a different size belt. And similarly, if they installed a 139.53729 10 foot rail extension, it comes with yet another belt. So this number that they give here is only for the seven foot high door. There's an eight foot high door and a 10 foot high door. And a lot of times on, on the eight foot highs, you might have something that's a little bit more than eight feet. It'll still use that eight foot uh, size. So let's show this, how you can measure these and how you tell which one you've got if you don't remember what you have here. All right, guys, here's our old belt. And just to show you some things you wanna look for when you get the right belt here. This is one end that connects onto the trolley. This is the hook on end. You wanna make sure it has an end like that on one end, and on the other end, it should have an end like this. It's kind of slightly offset with the flat edge facing the ribs. This particular one, you can see what happened to it is that over time, the material that's made of the belt gets old and brittle, and the teeth start breaking off from the metal inside of it, and then it just comes apart and it has nothing to grip onto, right? So that's what caused this belt to fail. So when we go to replace it, there's a couple of things that we're gonna look for. One. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is the number of notches in the belt. So there's a specification on these belts to get the right one. 20 of these notched grooves per six inches. So if we set this guy like this, we should end up with starting when the one that we're using to measure from, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So you wanna make sure that you've got 20 per every six inches. That's the first check. All right, the second check is the length. This is our replacement belt. You're gonna measure from the first groove after the metal clasp on the end. And you're just gonna run through this. And I'll fast forward this till we get to the end, but you're just gonna go ahead and measure out how long your old belt is. Now, even with the damage, you should still be able to do this particular procedure. Just go careful when you get to the section that's missing the belt material. What you get here is approximately 255 inches to the next groove in front of this end of the metal for the particular belt that goes on the eight foot extension, which is what I've got here. 255 inches is a part number 41A5250-1. A seven foot one is gonna be smaller. It's gonna run at that same measurement, roughly 233 inches. That's a 41A 5250. If you got the 10 foot extension, it's gonna run you up at this measurement roughly. It's a lot longer. Should put you right around about, about 307 and a half and that's gonna be a 41A 5250-2. I put links to these belts in the description below, but those are the three belts. They're three sizes and how you can tell which one you've got measuring out your old one. Now let me show you real quick some tips on installing this belt. All right guys, maybe you can't measure the old belt. So let's measure the garage door itself. So you can pin, 
take your tape measure, pin it to the floor, get a little bend in it, and then just keep feeding it up. And this way you'll be able to measure the garage door itself. So we can see on this guy here, we're sitting at 96 inches, which is eight foot. So this is an eight foot door, and that matches what we would expect for that size belt that we just measured. All right, if you don't have the owner's manual, here it is for you. All of these are gonna be the same. These two I've got, and all of the ones that are similar, the ones branded by Chamberlain, the ones branded by Liftsmaster, gonna be very similar to this Craftsman one. When they talked about initially installing it and installing the idler pulley, right? They're talking about getting the trolley connector running through where the idler pulley goes, sticking a screwdriver in a hole that's already meant for this purpose so that the trolley can have a temporary stop. You've got a bolt, a lock washer, and a nut that you're going to use to secure the pulley. They make a point to make sure that the you note if the pulley is greased. So if you notice that there's no grease on it, you're going to put a little bit of wheel bearing grease on there or something similar. White lithium will do as well. And then we're going to tighten that up after we leave about a foot of belt in this direction. So you notice the teeth are going to be facing towards the motor from this orientation. So we're going to run that piece there. There's the 12 inches they're talking about. We're going to get this installed. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to reattach the other end of the cable. After we loop it around the motor, we're going to run it through this hole with this piece here. We're going to rebuild this link. I'll show you all of this on the video. Make sure you have the notched end of the belt facing the rail and the flat end of this this uh, where this trolley threaded shaft fits in facing the rail. I'll show you that as well. They make a point to stress the flat end of the trolley threaded shaft is facing the rail. They say that a couple of different times. Then when we get ready to put this um, spring assembly back together, there is a, uh, a ring that goes on here, the nut ring, a spring, and then there's a, a, a piece that tightens down on it. It goes a certain way. And so when you get ready to do the tension, you have to have this nut ring in a certain orientation so that you can tighten it up by hand to about one inches of spring tension. Then you're gonna take a 7 16 wrench and, and a flathead screwdriver, and you're gonna give it a twist to release that ring. And then you'll end up with about an inch and a quarter, and that'll give you the precise tension on the belt. All right, guys, we're at the end of the rail now. We're going to take our flathead screwdriver, and we're going to insert it into this hole, just like it mentions in the manual. That will give us a temporary stop on the trolley. And then we're going to reach over, put this trolley up here. We're going to run this through. Ribs facing the rail, hook facing down. And we're going to go ahead and hook it up. Then we're going to take our pulley, idler pulley. We're going to get that wedged in here. And we're going to make sure that we've got grease on this, and this does. This has still got grease on it. If yours doesn't, like I said, put some on there. And we've got a lock washer. And we've got a nut. We're going to hand tighten it. And we're going to come up here with a 9 16 on the nut and a 5 8 on the idler bolt. And we're just gonna hand tighten this. You don't wanna go crazy with it, just until it's snug. All right, so at this point, we're ready to run it down at the motor end. All right, so now, again, keeping the ribs facing the rail, we're gonna bring it up around the motor. We're gonna hold this guy taut. We're gonna put the cap in. And then we're going to reattach the two Phillips screws that are used to secure it. And now we're ready to do the last end at the trolley end. All right, guys, then pull the belt a little tight. Again, you want to make sure the ribs are all facing this way. And again, remember they talked about the flat side in the manual. This is the side with the ribs. You notice the other side has got a little bend in it. This is the flat end. This goes like this. You're going to take the uh, sc screw and the link, and you push it through just like that. We zoom in on that. And then we're going to rebuild the link by putting the end piece on. And then we're going to put the spring back on that retains it. Just like that. 
Now, when it, this is going to go in here, but before I run it together, I'm going to show you what I was talking about on these two pieces, right? So let me take our spring out for a second. Here's the nut ring, and here's the tensioner. You see the nut ring has got these notches cut in it. Those notches are going to fit in here like this, and that's going to do the final adjustment on the tension, right? So we're going to put this guy and this guy on here. And we're going to tighten this down by hand. All right, guys, so just keep tightening it up by hand. Just like the manual mentioned, don't use any tools or you'll over tighten it. One thing we do want to make sure of is we want to make sure that this groove here and the groove of the nut ring, when we get to the end, stays lined up so that this guy can fit into it. We're not quite at the end yet though because we can still turn this by hand. And what we're after is that one and a quarter spring tension that it was talking about. So we're almost, we're almost right on it, right? If we refer back to the manual, they're talking about here is that you have one and a quarter inch of space from the inside edge to the trolley bracket. And so we want to look and see what we've got there from the trolley bracket to the spring edge. We've just got a few more turns to get that. Now we're not actually going to, you know, squeeze this to the point where we have this ring inside that groove because this is what you would do when it was brand new. For what we're trying to do, this is fine. We just want to keep this guy centered up so that he's going to keep going in there. I think we've got him lined up now because he's turning in line with the groove. And as soon as we get this one and a quarter, I'm going to call this done and we're done. And that's the correct tension. So we should have no, you know, not much slack, just like that. At this point, we can mount it back up on the wall and on the, on the uh, ceiling bracket and we can give it a shot and make sure it's working okay. This is why I opted not to use a hammer because I already predicted this a mile away. Okay. All right, guys, now to mount it back against the wall, we're going to slide it into the bracket. And we're just going to get the pin back in here. And then we're going to slide the retaining spring back on there. And now we need to mount it at the uh, ceiling bracket end at the motor side. All right, guys, so here's our two bolts reinstalled. Just make sure that you have the brackets back exactly in the orientation and in the particular holes that the installer originally had them in when you took it down so that you have your alignment and your distance from the door correct. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to hook up is the sensor wiring. So you want to put this back exactly the way you found it. In this particular model, the little orange tabs at the end can, are depressed with a flathead screwdriver. You can slide the wire in, then when you release them, they grab onto it. All right, now you're going to slide your end piece towards the trolley so that we can reconnect the brace to this piece. All right, then you're going to slide this up onto the trolley, bring the brace up, and then you're going to get the pin back in here. And then just like the piece that mounts to the wall, you're going to have another spring retainer. It gets wound in, and that piece is done, and then we can reattach the release. All right, now we're going to close our cover for our light that we had open to redo the wiring, and we're going to plug the unit back in to the ceiling connection. I like winding the cable around the brackets here and give it just enough slack that we can plug it in. Point guys, we're going to give it a test. So we're going to walk over the wall and hit the switch. We're going to wait for the um, trolley cable to go all the way back around. And then we're going to have to hit it again to send it in the other direction.
when it gets to the other end, it should engage with the trolley because we pulled the release lever into the lock position. At that point, it's locked in. Now when we hit it, it should open the door. And there it goes. Next thing we got to do is put some oil on these rollers. This point is working just great. I hope this video helped you out in picking the correct belt for your particular garage door opener and give you some tips on how to get it installed. Of course, the removal is just a reversal of the installation that we did here. If you found this useful or it saved you some money, go ahead and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Pay it forward. And as always, thanks for watching.